first steps towards high fuel efficiency standards on new cars sold in Australia will be taken later this year. Australia will no longer be at the back of the queue for electric vehicles. If you take away particular utes, they're tools of trade. And we're not banning any utes, I can tell you that for sure. It may be the first week of a parliamentary year, but there is a bit of a feeling of hiatus in politics. For now, the opposition seems a little adrift in its attack. It doesn't have the referendum on The Voice and was left with little room to manoeuvre on economic policy after the government's move on tax. There do seem to be some familiar old culture war tactics re-emerging though, first on fuel efficiency standards. This is all just a rerun of Scott Morrison's, you know, it'll end the weekend rubbish from a few years ago. We are going to stand by our tradies and we are going to save their utes. Bill Shorten wants to end the weekend when it comes to his policy on electric vehicles. This is not a radical change. It's an important change for Australia. 85% of cars and utes and SUVs sold around the world are sold under vehicle efficiency standards. The Albanese government announced new vehicle efficiency standards on Monday. Sounds a bit dull, but also worthy. The proposal is that Australia, long a laggard on fuel efficient cars, will aim to catch up with other countries, including the United States, by around 2028. This would happen by a new standard that would only apply to new cars. The government says the policy to be introduced next year will provide over $100 billion of fuel savings by 2050. This policy being announced by Chris Bowen and Catherine King will drive up the price of the types of cars that everyday Australians purchase. You can't have it all. The new vehicle efficiency standard is simply this, requiring car manufacturers to meet certain standards on grams per kilometre of fuel used. Uh, they can do that across their fleet uh, and we will require them to improve gradually but clearly over time the quality of vehicles they send to Australia when it comes to fuel efficiency. There are some in Labor ranks that worry this issue may yet come back to haunt it. And culture wars, even beyond pure partisan politics, are never all that far away from modern politics, as we saw on the forecourt of Parliament House on Monday. This reckless race to 82% renewables by 2030, this is ideology that does not meet the practical reality. We're not like Europe, we don't have to worry about Vlad cutting the tap off. Inside the building, work has been going on in the Senate to get agreement on the government's latest tranche of industrial relations reforms. Labor reached to deal with a crossbench on a so-called right to disconnect that will allow millions of workers to ignore bosses' calls and messages after hours and seek orders to stop them reaching out, with potential fines for breaches. Further amendments, including tightening up the laws covering gig workers and a fair and reasonable defence for employers to casual conversion, were next on the list for negotiation. So many governments have ignored working class people and the battlers in this country. This uh, piece of legislation is very important. I've heard so many stories uh, over the last six months really from gig workers and casual workers particularly and I've been able to successfully uh, have some amendments that relate to casual workers and the gig economy. The other issue that battlers of this country are feeling a little ignored on is prices. There is a policy gap about high prices, even though they are a major concern of Australians today. Veteran competition and consumer advocate Alan Fells was commissioned by the ACTU to produce a report on price gouging, which he launched at the National Press Club today. The establishment of a standing body that looks at prices, an independent commission, not to regulate them, but to identify their causes, remove wherever possible their uh, anti-competitive and other causes and other harms. But then I thought better to establish an independent national competition and prices commission drawn from the Commonwealth, states and territories. The Fells report is one of several commissioned in recent months to examine competition and retail prices, particularly for food, including a Senate inquiry and an ACCC inquiry. Fells has made a number of recommendations, including the establishment of a prices commission. He says these measures need to and can be put in place relatively quickly. Immediately there's some things to done. Tomorrow morning we could cut 
prices of electric cars. But changes to the competition law could be done very quickly. They're, people know what they are, what the issues are, uh, and that could be done, introduced into Parliament within two or three months. He argues that while the ACCC has a scope to look at competitive behaviour, there is not a body that looks at prices, or for that matter, a body that really has the power to look in any forensic detail at how prices are struck. It's quite hard for a person without legal powers to investigate what's really going on. So we, sometimes the media, others, say, gee, that price looks high, but I'd need to know more. So I think we should have more probing by governments and shaming, etc., about high prices. And speaking of gaps and shaming, the Productivity Commission released another scathing assessment today of the failure of all levels of government to meet their own commitments in 2020 to overcome the entrenched inequality faced by too many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people so that their life outcomes are equal to those of all Australians. Well, we need to do more. All governments need to do better. Uh, the report today is a reminder of that. The government acknowledges that. <laughs>